Truth be told, I actually just recorded this video, but then it cut me off three seconds in and I didn't even know. Hello individuals, uh, I'm wearing... I actually just got these glasses from Zenny, like they came in. Um, by the time I upload this video, it's gonna be... I'm gonna have these and be used to these. But I'm actually really excited because I've wanted half from glasses for years and I finally got them. I finally got like my dream glasses and I think they fit me well. Like, the prescription doesn't feel too strong, even though it's the same prescription as the glasses that I got from my usual doctor place, my usual eye doctor place. Um, those feel strong for whatever reason, and these just feel like whenever I take them off, it's not like this huge... So they're good. They're good. These are good. Um, yeah, so this is going to be my first story time video, and... So I've been watching a lot of story time videos, I, and like, some of them are relevant to the person that are saying the video, some of them aren't. But, I've been like... <sighs> actually really addicted to these like it's really interesting just to hear everyone's crazy stories and maybe they're not so crazy and it's just like they're really fun so my story time is actually going to be based off somebody else's like the first time they were blackout drunk but mine is more of like the first time that i was tipsy or the first time that i was drunk i can't really tell i guess you can be the judge of this i like to say that i'm tip that i was tipsy at the time but i've been told like no you were drunk I don't even know. Um, but before I even start the story, I do want to make a note that I am sober and have decided to live a sober sober life a couple of months ago and I've like been pretty strong with it. So this happened years ago and you know, whatever happened then doesn't reflect who I am now. I, I can make a whole video about why I decided to do this and I might I might want to. Um, but this, let's just jump into the story. Happened a couple years ago, it was before. I started my summer internship at the Brooklyn Community Pride Center. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that on YouTube, but whatever I said it, I said it, I said it. Um, and I was gonna start my summer internship and I I don't even remember having any relationship with alcohol before this, but yeah, so it was, it was, it wasn't before my internship even started, so I was, you know, I was, I hadn't even started that, but they asked for volunteers to help with the Brooklyn Pride and I was like, so down i was so ready to show them that i was like you know i was here to help or whatever um so if you live in new york and if you don't live in new york now you know if you live in new york you should probably and like you're in the community you probably know by now that every borough has its own pride brooklyn has more than one now because it's brooklyn and uh so yeah so the brooklyn the original brooklyn pride happens around like park slope and like it happened a couple weeks before the manhattan one um and if you're curious, I'm not going to any of them this year. I just, I like, I don't, I don't identify with any of these, so I just, I'm not going to go. But at the time I did, and I was super like, yay, like, Brooklyn Pride, this is going to be so cool. I can't wait to work. Like, I can't wait to help or whatever. Okay, so, um, I don't remember eating that much that day, and it was, like, scorching hot. And so that entire day, I was like, I was anxious because I, like, I don't do big crowds. I don't do really, I don't do well with big crowds. Um, and it was the first time that I like went and helped at a big crowd and had like no one around me that I knew because I was gonna go with my friend who was also gonna do the summer internship, but he couldn't go that day, so I was there by myself and like, I just like, I was, you know, I was by myself and like it was all these random strangers and I kept thinking about this one person that I shouldn't have been thinking about that I knew she wasn't going to be there but I kept trying like thinking like maybe I'll run into her and it was just, I was a hot, hot mess. I was anxious, I was stressed, I had to walk away at some point and like walk it off. So I was, like I was by myself and I felt, you know, it was just a lot. And so Brooklyn Pride is basically like, so you table, the first part of the event is tabling and then there's a march. And so I helped with the tabling, and then it was only it was only a few of us because people like cut, came and left for volunteering, and then there were the people who were employed there. And so I, I was gonna stick around for all day. I signed up for all of the time sheets. I was like down to help um, all day because I what else, what else was I gonna do? I wasn't gonna enjoy Pride all by myself. So helped with tabling, and then we only have one car to take the stuff that we didn't need for the march back to the actual center. And so then me and one of the other guys there who was there on a fellow, like an international fellowship, um, he, he and I had to carry some of the stuff to where the march was going to start. There was no car. It was just like, we were, we were, we were suffering. And so my former supervisor, like she was, I mean, they weren't my supervisor yet, but, um, my former supervisor was in this drumming group and 
So some of those drummers had left their drums there and we couldn't just leave it behind. So I we ended up having to carry them. I feel like I carried one of the drums or something. I don't even remember what the fuck I carried. I know that during Pride, during the tabling, we made these balloon arches, like this balloon arch that I ended up losing on the way there. But I was carrying so much stuff and I'm small. It was just two of us carrying all this crap for blocks and blocks and blocks. It was intense. So I was like, you know, I was kind of upset about it because I was like, you know, I don't even know these people. And like now I'm like, it just felt used, I guess. Um, and so he was obviously making his complaints and he was like, you know, I need a drink after this. And I was like, haha, yeah, me too. You know, I don't really, I didn't really have an experience with alcohol. Um, so we're, we're getting closer to where, to the bar. And so he asked me like, do I have, like, is there an age limit kind of like, is there an age restriction? And I was like, I said no at first. And I was like, oh wait, yeah, I'm, I was underage. Um, and I was like, no, I'm, you know, however, however young. And he was like, oh, you know, it's fine. So we get to the bar. This is World Cup season. And so like, I am, I'm like trying to watch the World Cup through the entrance of the thing, entrance of the bar. I was really excited about World Cup. I'm usually not a soccer fan. My parents are because they're like Latinos and that's what they watch. And they like love watching soccer, but I was never into it. So I'm, I'm there watching soccer. He comes back, it's a huge cup of beer and I'm trying to like impress all these like women in the in the drumming group um, and like pretend like I was old enough to do this and you know try to make it seem like so the bartenders or like the people walking working there wouldn't stop me and be like how old are you because I did look a little I look a little older when I'm fem when I'm more feminine presenting or whatever I was and rather than now I look like a child but um so I'm trying to you know pretend like I know how to do this and how to drink whatever. So I'm trying to drink slowly, and then when no one's looking, I do chug a little because I'm like, uh, I don't know, I just that's just what I did. And so my former, like my former supervisor, who wasn't my supervisor yet, came and saw me and was like, I'm gonna pretend like I didn't see you with that. And I was like, yeah, this is not a good impression. Um, so I'm just there drinking this, drinking this thing, and we're ready to go in March soon, and um, we're ready to go in March soon, and so I like, I get rid of the cup. I think I give it back to whoever I give it back to. And I step out, like it just didn't feel right. I felt like I was, you know, off balance when my words started slurring and I was trying really hard to keep my composure and pretend like I didn't, I wasn't tipsy. Um, so yeah. So the march was gonna start soon. I went to go pee, I, I, like I'm like in the bathroom and I'm like, oh shit, like I just, I think I'm tipsy. I... So I'm trying to play it off, um, but I start laughing a lot. So every time I drink, I could have one sip, not kidding. And all of a sudden I start laughing like a maniac kind of like like I know I shouldn't be doing this and I guess I kind of get myself into the into thinking like this is what's gonna happen I don't I mean I don't drink now but if I ever smoke um a cigarette or something like one one inhale and all of a sudden like I'm laughing it's the weirdest phenomenon I don't even know how to explain it whatever so I'm like I'm carefree and this is what usually happens when you know I have alcohol in my system I'm like oh like I'm really carefree. Um, usually I'm uptight and like very serious. When an alcohol in me, I like tend to be really like loose. And so the march, um, there was a I guess one of the donors or someone gave us a red convertible, and so I was in the back of this convertible with a stranger, and she's actually my friend now. But <clears throat> at the time, I was just meeting her. We were having a good time. I was dancing in the back. It was just it was so crazy though, cause I I all of it just. I mean, my memory now sucks, but even like that day, it just felt like off. Like I knew something was different. First, I'm with alcohol. I don't know what to do about it. I let the girl. I let the girl know, like you know, I'm a, you know, I drank a little. She drank a little before too, and then I think she was planning on drinking more afterwards. I don't know. I ended up going home because I had to go home and put gum in my mouth and pretend like nothing happened. Nothing happened. Um, and by the time I got home, I sobered up. I was, I was, I'm still a lightweight, you know, I don't drink, but like, I was, I'm very much a lightweight, like any, like one sip and all of a sudden, I don't know what's happening. Um, but yeah, that's really about it. That was, was my story. I felt off. I think it, like, it feels longer in my head because I just, I, like, I remember stepping out of the, of the bar and being like, what? It was hot and I, like, I didn't know these things could affect you, like the whole heat thing. I didn't. Like I knew these things, but I didn't. It didn't hit me that the fact that I was drinking sort of in the sun, um, I hadn't eaten that much, and I drank pretty quickly, and it was a, a lot more alcohol, a lot much more alcohol than 
what I was used to and I was used to nothing. So, um, yeah, that's really about it. If you watched up to here, thank you so, so much. Subscribe, like, or comment. You can give an individual their wings. If you subscribe, you can join my winged family. My social media is over there. You can follow me over there. And if you want to see my previous videos, my monthly favorites from May, that's below me. And until the next video.